we have to, here in the United States, we have to document where all the money comes from when you're going to purchase a house. And that's because of the anti-money laundering laws. Bienvenidos a un episodio de Atlanta Dulce Hogar, este podcast dedicado a bienes raíces, vender, comprar e invertir. En esta ocasión tengo conmigo a April Murray. We're going to talk in English. So, thank you so much for coming, April. Thank you for, for uh, coming to the podcast and being here. Yeah, you're welcome. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Great. Yeah. Awesome. So, she's from North Point Mortgage, a loan officer. Quite a few years of experience, right, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, about uh, collectively about 10 years oh, wow. but I've been that's with North lot. Point for six okay yeah. wow that, that's that's something mm -hmm. they always say that when you once you hit the the 10 year uh, there you know if it's, everything is going good for the business or it's going bad <laughs> so thank you I'm again here, so <laughs> there, you <go. laughs> there you go thank you again for, for coming uh, she's an expert her all her information is going to be here like always And I always ask this, this, this question. What are three things, or I like to start so we can loosen up. What are three things that uh, your house must have besides piping and, 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 and the cables for, for the lights and everything? Yeah. Besides the basics? <laughs> exactly. Okay, so three things that I would look for most in the house. Um, space. Okay. So, like open space? No, like size of rooms because that's okay. a little harder to change. You know, you can yeah. change the cosmetics of the room and yeah, stuff. Yeah, you can always change the paint. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but um, and closet space is big. Got to have a good closet, closet space. <laughs> so you know what? What I'm seeing right now is that not only have access to a walk-in closet, mm -hmm. but the walk-in closet of the master or. You can say that now because you're discriminating. The <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the main room of the house um, goes <clears throat> from the closet, right? Room, closet, and then to the laundry. Yeah, that's how mine is. Oh, well, really? It's nice. actually right I'm off the bathroom. So mine's the bedroom, then it goes into the bathroom. There's a one walk-in closet, and then there's a bigger walk-in closet in the back. But it's, they're the connected. Side. They're connected to doors. They're connected through the bathroom, and then okay, to the bathroom. and then from there, there's another door that goes right into the laundry room. Yeah. That goes so off of my bathroom is a laundry room into the hallway. Oh wow! Which I really do upstairs like. or upstairs. No? okay upstairs. Okay. Oh, I don't know if you have a ranch, maybe. Yeah, no, I like it because then I don't have to be hauling laundry up and down the stairs, whether it's dirty clothes or clean uh, clothes. Of course, it's nice to have it all right there, and it does pile up a little bit on the landing, but. But you That's don't have that. that. Hey, can you bring the, the clothes yeah, up? This is or not can you bring the up. clothing uh, down? Or can you? Oh, it's yeah. like, oh my God, yeah. you have it there. And it's not it's piled there. up on my couch. So that's good. Oh. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, so I look for space in general of the size of rooms. And then um, closet space is really big. Closet. Okay. Yeah. And no, the last thing would be backyard? No. Uh, that was, wasn't at the time no. my biggest the thing. The kitchen? When I bought it. Kitchen's big. Really? Yeah. You cook? I do. Like? I'm not like a chef or anything. Okay, no, me neither. <laughs> I'm not like a gourmet me cook. But no, like, no, me neither. But I cook on a regular basis okay. for me and my kids, so ah, yeah. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Okay, getting into uh, more of your uh, expertise, which is mortgage, mm -hmm. is there, uh, what is something like if you're buying, right? If, if, what is something that you must have or that you will not avoid during your, your purchase? Like, what would you recommend somebody? Maybe is that the easiest question? As far as qualifying? No, as far as in your mortgage. Like, for example, uh, some people don't like to have their, their uh, insurance and, um, what do you call, taxes. the taxes in, on, your, on their payment. Well, would, would you recommend that? Well, yeah, absolutely. Cause, I mean, Not have it or no, have it? No, having it. Have it in there. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, first of all, unless you're putting more than 20% down, you don't get a choice. Oh, really? Yeah. Some underwriters at 10% down can, they may allow you to waive that, which is called okay. escrows. So yeah, yeah. Tax and insurance are called escrows. Okay. So they may allow you to waive if you're putting 10% down, but usually there's a fee to waive them. Um, but yeah, I, there's no cost mm -hmm. for you to keep them in there. 
and the way that works, instead of every year your homeowner's insurance bill coming to you on, you know, in the mail and you have this big chunk of whatever, fifteen hundred dollars yeah. you gotta come up with and pay mm-hmm. and taxes every year coming around from the county and you gotta pay that out of your pocket. The having it escrewed in your payment so every month part of your payment of is going into that little escrow account. And it's a savings account that doesn't cost you anything basically. I know. So, so I would I personally would leave it in there. But one of the things with my niche, uh, I'm I'm an immigrant. Um, I'm Latino, uh, and or Spanish speaker, like they say, Hispanic. Is something big with that? That, for example, there's no translation from escrow. Mm-hmm. So that's why, like, we don't say in. It not, it's not like we, you don't say that. No, it's like they don't understand what that's, is that. And yeah. then you try to explain that you're paying, and it's different. You know, like it doesn't happen in their in our country. Like right. for example, in Venezuela, where I'm from, people my age never saw uh, a, a credit or like a loan. Never, <laughs> like they don't know what that is. Like nobody ever. We know because our our grandpas and, grand, and fathers and parents told us like, oh, once upon a time, you could get a loan. You could get a loan, and we could pay in, in notes and da da da. You can't do that in Venezuela. No, everything no, no. has to be paid in yeah, full cash. Yeah, full cash. Like I, I, I was, I was also a, a a realtor, a real estate agent in Venezuela. Uh-huh. I got ready as a journalist, but I did that like on the side. And there's no commission. There's not a, a like a like for example. People, when I say that to them, the, the real estate commission is like, oh, yeah, all you think about is money. No, no, no. I'm not talking about commission from what I sold. I'm talking about there is a commission for people that get together and make the law. Oh, <laughs> Things like okay. that, for example. They don't understand that. Yeah. And so I remember that the, the credit used to be like, let's, for example, a house would cost $500,000, but the Top, top, top loan you would would be able to get from a bank would be like fifty fifty thousand. And it's like I'm not Why even ten percent. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. So everybody they forgot didn't. about that. No, they they bought, but it's different. Okay. So okay, coming to the United States, you would say never put that in in a, a way. Always pay your scroll. I think it's easier to have it escrowed. Um, again. You only, it depends on the amount down you're putting down if you even get the option to okay. waive those escrows or to remove the escrow. Oh, not everybody gets that option. Not everybody gets that. If you're only putting 3%, 5%, even 10%, like I said, it's not automatic that you can waive those. It's a, on case It's like, by, no, case put by it in there basis. because we want to make sure those are going right. to be paid. Right, because if you remove them, the lender sees it as a higher risk because a if risk. you default or don't pay your mortgage and foreclose on your home mm-hmm. and the lender takes the home back over and they find out that you haven't paid your taxes for three years mm-hmm. that tax bill is now the lender's the problem. lender's problem so they uh, prefer mm-hmm. that you leave it in there and i think a good way because you said that escrow doesn't translate mm-hmm. yeah start describing it as a savings account that's no Same. cost to them well actually uh when i looked up the in the dictionary it says Fideicomiso, which is like one of the the words for a savings account mm. that does not cost anything. Right. Yeah, like, you don't like, earn oh, you interest, need a minimum, you don't you know? pay interest. Exactly. Right. That's what exactly what it means. Okay. Cool. But again, because in Venezuela we like people my age or younger, I'm forty I'll be forty two this year. They don't they don't they never saw that. I yeah. remember but I was a kid. I was like 10, right. 15. I wasn't thinking on a loan. Everything was done in, is done in cash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, when, when, I got, when I got to be an adult, when I was able to, you know, I'm um, thinking of buying a car. I'm thinking of buying a house. It was all cash. Yeah, and it's a complete option. By the way, by the way, <laughs> cash. How... How do they? How do lenders love cash? We hate cash. <laughs> but now, why is now, everybody like they said? Like, let me like, clarify. Yeah. Cash in your bank, we love. Oh. Cash at home, under your mattress, or why in not? a safe. I've been saving. I've been saving. We don't love because the the reason for that is we have to here in the United States. We have to 
document where all the money comes from when you're going to purchase a house. And that's because of the anti-money laundering laws. Yes. So we have to make sure that that money from anybody buying, whether you are been here your whole life or you've just gotten here, it doesn't matter. They have to know that that money is clean, that it's not from illegal activity. That's right. And usually illegal activity comes in forms of payments in cash. In cash. <laughs> so they have no, to make sure. No, no, but sure. see, what I do, April, is that I get pay, right, from my employer. Mm -hmm. Then I take it out because banks, you never, tr you could not trust banks. Mm -hmm. And then I put it on, on, on the drawer in my house. Is that okay? Um. Sure, unless you want to buy a house. <laughs> so, I mean, the other the other thing that you can do, if you're in a situation where you have thousands of dollars at home in cash and you know that you want to buy a house in the near future, mm -hmm. go take that money and deposit it into your bank account, and then it needs to be in there for at least 60 days. Because 60 days. We're going to get Right, because we're going to get two months of bank statements from you when you start the home buying process. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to show in there. We don't want to see that big old deposit. So we got to make uh, sure we get bank statements after that deposit after that so deposit that deposit's not made. showing. Because any big, large because cash then deposits, he's gonna ask, we have to source where from? that came from. And if you don't have any documentation... No, no, I sold something to a friend. Yeah, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't count. <laughs> now, if you have a, it, some instances, if you have a bill of sale and it shows that they paid you in cash. My wife you, sells arepas, which is a, a type of food, like okay. tacos, uh -huh. and she gets cash and then we put it in there. And you put is it that in the okay? Bank. And you put it in the bank? Yeah, yeah. 10,000 arepas, one, $1 each. <laughs> 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 um, you would have to show the That's only, the thing, right? yeah, we would have to still have documentation of that business, of your transactions. You'd have to get in all this paperwork. So That's it's right. really, it's really best to just deposit your money from your paychecks into your bank account okay. and leave it in your bank account. Or if you do have, like I said, a large sum of cash that you want to use, then you need to go ahead and deposit it now. And we need to be probably three months out before we get those bank statements because to be we'll able go back to, to qualify. Right, to be able to qualify. And be qualify. like, okay, that money is not coming from dirty that, that money. That money is now considered it's seasoned. Seasoned. And it's we clean. Don't it's like, well, but let's say, let's say nobody doing cash. The idea is to make sure that you know, it's, it's clean money, right? Right, because you don't want to, it's a lot of They don't want to get involved with laundry money. Right, laundering money through real estate is one of the number one ways um, Yeah, of criminals, cleaning. Yeah, yeah of cleaning <laughs> dirty money <laughs> exactly. from criminal activity is real estate. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So that's why you have to, we as mortgage lenders. Yeah. You know that I have, a, I have a, a story where the person showed up to the closing table with a bag of money? <laughs> <laughs> But well, it says class, cash to close. <laughs> cash to close. Right? Oh, man. Well, the attorneys won't even take that. I know. They, they won't <laughs> even take a personal we check know. for more than $2,500. So, yeah, yeah you got to get it certified funds from the bank. And, and, and also that, like, is that something that affects the whole transaction? Like, if somebody says, no, look, I don't, I don't, I work, but I make $10 an hour, but I have this $100,000 $100, in cash. It's, you can't you can't use it. We won't. We will not. We cannot use that as qualifying assets. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, somebody that has money, let's not, let, let's not say ten uh, hundred thousand, but somebody that has cash, they say twenty thousand. They've been saving for years. This is clean money. This is their money. They just don't trust because uh, another uh, anecdote, I guess, is that I remember when I was like ten years old, these two banks, Union and Latino. In Venezuela, they disappear. And I remember family members crying, mm. like all oh, my money. Like they just how how is this possible? Like da da da. Like why is that happening? And I'm I've been asking people like because I I'm like even though I'm from Venezuela and I saw that when I was like 10, 12 years old, mm. I'm like why people don't like to put cash. I had another I had another story. Where it was here, the person was saving their money. And you know in the, those uh, fake ceilings that you lift up a yeah, little the bit? Tiles. The tiles. Yeah. And then you put, you put it in there. Uh -huh. <laughs> whatever. When he went, okay, I got the money. I'm going to buy this and that. Or whatever he was going to was saving for. 
he opens that go like this and it was uh it's gone. The, no it, it was like shredded paper because the the rats had <gasps> ate it and, and eat it uh, and, and whatever <laughs> six thousand dollars Oh, yeah. you can't do anything about it. Yeah, exactly. So mm. I know that's why that the, the reason that banks disappear, like the Valley, the remember this Valley Bank, whatever we, uh, in, last year I in think it was California in California. Yeah, things like that ha I've seen happening in Venezuela, and I know some people have told me in other countries in Latin America and cent Central America, but it's like, how do we tell them you okay? Yeah. Well, I. I'm not a, a bank. Yeah, of means, course, of course, of course. From what I understand with the bank, like the one in California, it's FDI insured, FDIC insured. Insured. So we have, it's backed by the government. So um, I know that some of the bigger investors in the bank mm -hmm. did lose some money. But the, some everyday, the, people, the everyday people, they their money was, it, yeah. it secured up to so a certain it, amount. Of, I think it's like up 250? to... 250? I, I it believe it's 250. I've heard, dollars. like, if you have, I've heard uh, this person on, on, on social media, I think it's Ramsey. Say if you have quarter million dollars, which is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, have one bank account. Mm -hmm. If you have half a million, five hundred thousand dollars. Two bank accounts. Two bank accounts. At different banks. <laughs> at different. Okay, okay. At different yeah, banks. because if not like the same thing. Okay, yeah. at different banks. Two banks account. Yeah. So that because way we can. Because it is insured up to that much. So any like me or you, if we had had twenty thousand dollars in that bank when it went under, there you, go. you would have gotten your money. Your money back. Yeah. Insured, yeah, it's insured by the federal government. And okay, so I know our federal government isn't always the best and everything, but yeah. that I do trust them in that situations, in those situations when it comes to that, because so, the regulations we have in place. That's right. Yeah. Something else you would recommend apart from not having cash in your house, apart from uh, well, I'm not saying don't have cash in your house. It's always good to have yeah, some cash on hand, but not for, for buying. But not for buying a house. Uh, there you go. Like <laughs> yeah. some cash, you mean like. If we gotta run to the yeah, to I the keep super, I keep a couple the grocery thousand store. in my house too, just yeah? for emergencies. You never really? know. But you never know when the hurricane is coming, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> or the I don't or know the tornado. Snowstorm, the ice but storm. If, if, the, if the if the tornado comes, <laughs> it's like the tornado is taking it with it. That's true. That's true. But I always like to have a little cash on hand for safety. Really, but I don't like that. Oh no, I do at my house. Really? Okay. Yeah. Very small, like a thousand. Uh, a gun two. would be better for safety. I got one of those too. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> don't you worry. <laughs> there you go. Well, we're in Georgia, right? That's right. Apart from that, uh, is there any other recommendation for qualifying for for uh, during when you're getting ready or after you buy? Because everybody thinks that you bought the house, you pay, you already signed the papers, you're done with with uh, lending or borrowing. You can do other things. Mm -hmm. Right, like I don't know, like refinance. Like yeah. you get, when rates come down, you can always refinance into a lower rate um, as you lower interest rate, which would lower your monthly payments. Um, as you build equity in the home, if you ever want to um, use the equity in your home to yeah. do an addition to your home, or put a pool in, or start a business, um, and you need cash for that. You oh, can pull like a the up. yeah, or or cash out refinance, depending on where interest rates are. If interest rates are low enough, a cash out refinance may make the most sense, it because it's a fixed rate. Yeah. Or you could do a HELOC, which is an adjustable rate. But if you need fifty thousand dollars to start a business, you can pull that from the equity of your home okay. and then pay yourself back um, at a you know whatever what the interest rate, but over mm. usually a ten year period. So oh, it's usually ten. It's not yeah. thirty like the house. No, okay, you, but okay. you can always refinance them after ten Again. years. Again, yeah. Oh, okay. The HELOCs, yeah. So you it doesn't end when you buy, correct. <laughs> or when you sign in right there. That's correct. Um, I was thinking something else. Well, what was it? You okay. had asked about preparing. What other things they need to yeah, do preparing? Yeah. Um, I always recommend you definitely get your credit looked at by a lender. Mm. Uh, not not two weeks before you're ready to go out and purchase a house. Like several months before you're ready to two three right months. Uh, three would be good before you start looking before at you houses. Start looking or... Because you want to get pre-approved, and and that way, if there is anything on the credit that needs to be worked on, if we need to get your scores up or whatever, mm -hmm. whether it's paying down debt, whether it's but you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna screw my my credit if you look at it if you run it. No. Nope. No. Yes, yes, I've seen it happen because when I bought a car, it went down. That's, you know why? Uh -huh. Okay. No. 
<laughs> because when you buy a car, most of the time those car dealerships send your information out to 10 different banks and they all pull your credit on the same day. And yes, you get crushed. Um, the, the CFPB, which is the regulatory credit okay. overview. I didn't know that. Yeah. CFPB, they CSPB, allow, okay. CFPB, they allow for, um, when you're shopping for a mortgage, not a car, okay. cars don't count. They don't care about cars. When you're shopping for a mortgage, for you have a 30 day window to have 30. your credit pulled a few times with it only affecting you for the first pull, which is usually a few points. Like four, four weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. So, like, if I was shopping for a mortgage, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can go have lender A, B, and C pull my credit. So, if you shop weeks. for a mortgage, that means that you have a better credit than another company? Uh, I mean, interest rate? Possibly, yes. So, huh. every every lender has different interest rates. They're all... they The base rate is usually the same, but we okay, all have different okay, margins. Okay. So, yeah, okay. lenders will have different interest rates. So it is okay to shop for a mortgage. Um, okay. But it's not going to hurt you to have your mortgage, your credit pulled okay. a few times within a 30-day period. Now, I don't suggest going out and having it any more than two or three just because okay. there's really yeah. no need for it. It's and not going to be that much of a difference no. between one and another. Yeah, right? and those inquiries do stay on your credit for six months. But yeah. you don't get a you don't see a hit to your score except for the very first pull, first and it's usually in, just a few within points. one month. Within that one month, yeah. So if you get so like now, five points, maybe. Yeah, the higher your credit score starts at, the less it impacts it. Oh, I've noticed that. That's not no. That's not technically yeah, yeah, yeah. a rule, but that's yeah, something I've noticed rule, over your experience. My experience. That's yeah. the beautiful thing about experience. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So, but that's not the same thing when you do go shop for a car. Mm. Every hit hurts. Every hit okay. counts for any kind of other credit pools. Because that's that's one of the things I struggle more with. Like people telling me, "No, I'm not ready yet. I'll let you know," and I'm like, "How you gonna know?" They're gonna know, <laughs> you know that. <laughs> it's like, how are you gonna, like, how are you gonna know? Yeah, because you don't, because you guys might, you know, you might see your score on Credit Karma is seven forty, but in real life, when we pull it, it's six ninety, and because your credit thing is broken. Yeah, because those, <laughs> those things are never accurate. They're a good guide, but they're never accurate. The other day, I was uh, talking about that. I did an episode by myself, just to like, you know, resolutions, and uh, I was saying that. Is because not all companies, credit cards or auto or whatever company that is lending, that is giving you credit, mm -hmm. reports to all the bureaus, mm -hmm. to Equifax, to TransUnion, to uh, Expedian, mm -hmm. and, and uh, the other one is FICO. So, like, FICO has access to your checkings account, but they don't have access to your other ones. Or yeah. sometimes uh, American Express don't report to Equifax okay. or to TransUnion or to yeah. Expedian. They, they decide what they do because they're an um, autonomous company. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even like let's say you go down to Mattress Firm and you they pull your credit and you open an account there to buy a new bed. Mm -hmm. They might only report to one bureau because that's, one the, only, that's bureau. One, the only one they That's report. why the difference when you yeah, look at Credit Karma scores. or any other mm -hmm. Credit Sesame, I think there is another one. I don't know. Yeah. I, they, I, Even though, like, your credit cards, if you have credit cards, they give you your scores. Like, the other day, for instance, here's a great example. I just bought a car this week. Really? Yeah, so, congratulations. Thank you. When are we going for a ride? <laughs> <laughs> it's right after. There you go. After um, this. Yeah. After these commercials. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so I had seen on um, my credit card, okay. you know, on my app, okay. it showed my TransUnion score is 645, right? And I was like, that doesn't seem right. And I pulled my Equifax and that was 737. I was like, oh, that seems more right. Seven. And then I didn't have my experience. And so I went to the car dealership and I said, hey, I really want you to only shop this out to like three or four banks because I don't want my credit pulled bunch. Mm -hmm. um, so you can tell them that. Um, and then, oh, okay. Yeah, you can when you're you go like, shop hey, for a car. I'm Zavi. Yeah, Hello. you're like, I know what you guys do. Yeah, I saw um, <laughs> the Atlanta Sweet Home uh, yeah. <laughs> the I've podcast. Been, <laughs> yeah, and I've been, I've been through this process before. I learned the hard way in my younger years. But, um, and I said, you oh, know, yeah. I really want you, I don't want you to shop it out to anybody that pulls Trans union, um, yeah, trans union, because my score is a little lower. So they did send it to one that pulled all three, which was fine. And it came back. My trans union score was a seven forty five, not oh, a six forty five. Wow. And, you and my credit, card, my credit, credit card, card thing, had it totally wrong. Oh, Fico <laughs> was wrong. No, just um, the credit card. You know how you have a credit oh, card yeah. app, and it'll tell you your uh, score right now. And it was reporting. It was probably based on one. 
Or? Well, it was TransUnion specifically, uh, and but that was com- it was a hundred points lower than what my actual wow. TransUnion score was. So when you're gauging your credit score based on Credit Karma, your little credit card apps, it's not always accurate. It's not all accurate. And but a because they're like a consumer is, credit that I was told, yeah, right? Yeah, it's a consumer credit. They don't and and you guys everything. use when you pull, you use something specific specifically to mortgage industry, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then. Auto industry pulls credit specifically or for their interest, right? Yeah, like, they, what what do we care about? They have different algorithms, I guess, is the best way oh, to okay, put okay. it. Yeah, because even at, um, like... These algorithms are everywhere. Social media, I know, right? credit. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you can't get away from it. But a mortgage credit report is way more in-depth, way more thorough. We get all the information. <laughs> because we want to know the risk. The yes. real risk, right? Because we're not lending you fifty thousand dollars for a car. We're lending you two hundred thousand dollars plus for a house. So it's we're gonna do yeah. a little more digging. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes six hundred thousand. Sometimes six hundred thousand. Yeah. Or a million. Plus. What is what is the top right now for Jumbo? Oh, seven hundred and sixty six thousand. So, so after seven seven hundred and fifty is Jumbo. After 766. 66, okay. It's jumbo. Yes, yeah. easy for them. Yeah. <laughs> 750, you 750. make ju- jumbo. And it gets a lot harder. <laughs> right? Yeah. Harder like what? Like. Oh, gosh. Way more documentation. More documentation because have, it's riskier. It's more yeah. money that You've I'm gotta putting in the line. You've got to have a lot of reserves, um, like reserves, which are oh. one month reserve is the full monthly payment of the new home mm-hmm. in your bank account sitting there even after you do your down payment and closing costs. you got to have months. Oh, you got to have Usually six to 12 months, months of reserves. Oh. Yeah. And it can't be all retirement funds. Sometimes Some of it can be. Some of can it I have a cash? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> I have it under my no bed. <laughs> I have it under my bed next to my uh <laughs> the shotgun. <laughs> the shotgun. Right. right. No, no cash. No? Wow. So no cash. Yeah. They don't like When we Pedia. say cash in our application or when we talk cash reserves, we're uh-huh. talking about cash in the bank. In the bank. In the bank. That is that is something that we know it doesn't come from illegal activity. That's right? right. I always tell my clients like, no, I have cash in there. No, the thing is that you, they see it as if you went to the corner, sold something, and then came back, here, I got the money. Right. They don't see it as something like, oh, this person saves. No, you save in the bank account. That's right. Because, again, if you have $250,000 to yourself first, where are you? <laughs> right? <laughs> Why aren't you my client? And second... Have more than one account. I mean, that's easy, right? right. You're going to get secure. The FCDI? F- FDIC. FDIC is the, is the company that, or the... The regulatory. Insures, regulatory. The insures, yeah, yeah. Organ, uh, organization. Yeah, the okay. federal organization. Yeah, federal, okay. All right. Um, I, don't, I don't know if there is a... I, I don't like saying this, but it's something else that you... You like to let people know, like, hey, uh, do this, prepare this way. Like you say, for a f- minimum three months before, you let me help you, right? Yeah, and if you do the three months help as well, me help you. <laughs> if if you're looking, if you go get pre-approved three months before, and let's say you do have that ten thousand dollars under your mattress at home, guess yeah. what? I can tell you to go put it in the bank put it in now, the bank. and by the time we're ready to go. We're gonna have two months of bank statements that doesn't that show doesn't that deposit. Doesn't show the item. Right. Boom. Deposit. Red mm-hmm. flag. In fact, if you deposit more than ten thousand dollars in cash, the FBI gets a, a a little poke. Yeah, they get it. It gets flagged. They have flagged. to. Yeah, take like your, your like the the, the, the bank will say, uh, Mister FBI. <laughs> so I'm just letting you know this person put ten thousand dollars in cash. Just letting you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean. Like, Maybe do it in like nine thousand dollar increments. <laughs> <laughs> nine thousand dollars. I've done that okay. before too. Really? Nine. Well, nine, even when nine, I was like, nine? yeah. Well, okay. I mean, I would had to pull account money from You're one rich. account to the other. <laughs> no, from one account to the yeah. other to move it to a different bank, oh, and they okay. did. It was ten thousand or higher, and I had to oh. provide my driver's license, and I had to fill out this form, and. So it gets flagged. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, because they don't, they, they're asking, where's this money moving from mm-hmm. or why is it moving? Where are you selling your drugs? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> For example, now, I'm, when, whenever I get paid, I'm not taking a, a check. It takes 10 
days, business days to clear. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'd rather pay 15 bucks or whatever the, the wire, uh, the transfer, wire transfer cost yeah. and just have it there. And still, they if, if it goes above 10,000, I didn't know. Like They go like, uh-oh, this guy's is getting this money. Why? But they see the transaction. They, the, they see the... Pay the real stub. estate transaction. Yeah, stuff. the, the okay, pay stubs okay. document where it came from, so you're fine. Yeah, yeah it's just so cash. It came from an attorney. Okay. <laughs> That's right. <Nice. laughs> oh, by the way, yeah, all the money is given to the... They give the money to the attorney, right? Yes. When you fund yes. for to buy the house, yes. you give the money to the attorney. I give the money. Everybody gives the money to the attorney. The attorney the buyer, takes the care seller, of everything. everything. They all the money. secure it, yes. There you go. Yeah. All right, April. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, Maybe next time also we can, you know, talk about something else. And sure. We'll do it again. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody. Gracias muy amables por estar allí. Esto fue Atlanta Dulce Hogar, un podcast dedicado a las bienes raíces, venta, compra e inversión. Thank you.